the first time I filmed the sunrise was just before I started planning this film. It was completely potluck, really, because you don't know where the sun's going to rise over the horizon. You have to guess where it's going to rise. You have to hope that the shadows are going to be right. You have to hope that the camera is going to capture it properly. It's not going to be too bright. You've got the settings right. You've got to guess everything, basically. <laughs> What does climate change mean to me? Scary predictions in the newspaper and graphs with temperature rising and all the obvious things. It's so difficult to come to terms with what all the predictions might mean or even even come to terms with the fact that what we what humans are doing could be changing the whole planet. It's quite hard to feel any connection with it as a real thing. Climate change is basically just a phrase and banded around so much you just become immune to it. My hope is that everyone will come away from the film with something new to think about. Okay, um, first of all you might be watching this film because you're already quite concerned about climate change or you might be watching thinking nah it's not caused by humans or you might still be slightly undecided in which case you're like me I haven't completely made my mind up so basically what I want to try and do is get clearer in my head how serious a threat climate change is to us if in fact it's really a problem at all hopefully I'll be meeting some experts who can tell me how sure or sceptical scientists are at the moment on evidence for global warming caused by humans as well as asking the public what they think and I'll be bringing my video camera all along the way but first of all what I want to do is go and speak to my grandparents because out of everyone I know they've seen the most change during their lifetime I don't just want to know if they've seen climate change in their life though I'm going to ask as well how lifestyles are different now compared to when they were children. Okay, so let's start with food. What was different about what you ate and where it came from? Oh, well, the food, the food has changed out of all proportion to what it used to be. Well, the only time we had a lot of meat would we keep a pig in the backyard, and when our pig was killed, we share it with neighbours. And the same way the neighbours would have their pig killed and share it with us. Because there were no refrigerators, it all got to be done in the cold weather. You kept your pig, you all the milk you put on the allotment, and then you had, if, if you got a good crop of onions, you'd share with everyone. It was, it was more share and share about, wasn't it, more? Neighbours. There were only um, uh, seasonal vegetables in the shops in those days. I mean, you, we, we weren't getting beans from Kenya or Nigeria or places like that. It was all just homegrown produce. What was ever in season, the shops used to sell. Nowadays, you can go in the shop and buy grapes and oranges and bananas all the time. Okay. I remember, can you remember Valerie when she had a, a, during the war, just after the war, we had a banana and she didn't know you got to peel it. We, we, we never saw that sort of thing. How about transport? Was that different? How did you get around? Walk. Bike. Push bike. Yeah. Well, you were lucky if you had a push bike. Yeah, I had a push bike. We were on a bike all the time when we were in it. From when I was about 10 until I was 16, I saw I had a bike. We used to go everywhere on a bike. Miles and miles and miles. But gradually, as time went on, towards the end of the 50s, more cars came easy to purchase, and, and then, of course, it gradually took off. I mean, in those days, it was, it was a delight to be able to drive anywhere. We were out all the time, outside all the time, doing something. But there was nothing to do indoors. I mean, there was no television. I'd like to know if the weather's changed. What was the snow like when you were children? Deep. Lasted a long time. In 1947, it lasted for 
<laughs> that was the year that they had where it, it, the slush froze in straits in Oxford. You know, it would go to the side and into a rut. And they had to have pneumatic drills to take pneumatic all the drills to ice away. Uh, certainly, Ross, the weather has changed. The last few years, I can recall maybe winters where we've barely had a frost. Barely had a frost. Well, in years gone by, we've had frosts when the trees were all covered in ice and it might last for a week or 10 days before it goes. But the last, I would say, 10 years, it's just started to, um, to warm up. The worst snowfall for 25 years has cast a deep blanket of disruption right across the Meridian region. We're experiencing the worst period of prolonged cold weather for 30 years and our region is reeling from the effects. Heavy snowfall overnight left many roads impassable. Okay, it's been about a month or so since I interviewed my grandparents and as you can see from the field of snow behind me, the weather seems to be trying to do everything it can to prove wrong what my granddad was saying about things warming up in the past couple of years. This is probably the deepest snow I've ever seen. It's absolutely freezing and it's not just my area that's had really cold weather, the whole of the country has had an abnormally cold winter. So it would be easy to think weather like this proves wrong the theory that the climate's warming up. What's important to say early on is that climate is average weather, which means it takes into account weather over a longer period of time, often set at 30 years. One cold winter, or any one-off weather event, doesn't make that big a difference to climate change science because this is the study of trends in the weather. Unless the normal weather gets repeatedly cold year on year, we won't be into global cooling. More importantly, taking average temperatures from the instrumental record, scientists can look back on the first decade of the 21st century and see it was the warmest that's been recorded yet. So, this leads me on to the first important piece of information which I'm going to be questioning and using from now on in the film which is, although it's obviously ironic that I'm standing in a field of snow while I say it, uh, the science so far and the evidence from temperature records dating back over the past century is that, like it or not, the climate is actually warming. This might seem like stating the obvious to some of you, but it's the essential basis to the theory I'm looking at. From the records I mentioned, an average global temperature increase has been figured out and is agreed to be a rise during the 20th century of more or less 0.7 degrees Celsius. We've established the climate is warming, which means we've only just got to the really important question, a question that for some reason never goes away. I'm going to go and ask some people who know a lot more about this than I do. Are we really causing climate change? We know perfectly well that the climate of the Earth has been oscillating ever since the Ice Age. After all, and it wasn't so long ago, there was a mini Ice Age and the Thames froze over. So you know that, that uh, the, the, the climate of the Earth is changing. Uh, the question is, was that oscillation uh, bigger than, uh, than could be accounted for by sunspots or whatever else you might invoke? Uh, and was humanity the cause of it? Uh, my uh, conviction uh, arrived uh, when I saw, uh, I went to a lecture given by a very distinguished American climate chemist who, who specialised in the climate of the upper atmosphere and the chemistry of the upper atmosphere. And he produced graphs showing findings over the last 200 years, um, showing the variation of various elements up there. Um, and they all uh, had the same shape, the hockey stick shape. Um, going along like that and then curving upwards. 
Um, and when he superimposed on that uh, the Industrial Revolution, the change of the Industrial Revolution, and the increase in the humanity and the numbers of the population, uh, the, the coincidence was so strong that, that you couldn't deny it. There's no single silver bullet that definitely links man-made emissions of greenhouse gases to warming, but there are multiple strands of evidence which the scientists point to, the fact that uh, for the past 800,000 years CO2 levels have never been as high as they, they are now, how every single year since the year of my birth, 1958, the level of CO2 has gone up, not down. The physics of CO2 are quite well known. It, it warms rather than cools. The more you add, the likelihood is that you will lead to warming. Obviously there's never been humans before and or there's never been any other species which has transferred very large quantities of carbon from the geological reservoir, so coal and oil and gas, fossil fuels, into the atmosphere it's over such a short space of time. Scientists know that the billions of tonnes of fossil fuels we've burnt in just 250 years since the Industrial Revolution have changed the atmosphere of the planet. There are lots of gases involved, but the one everybody knows about, and the one we're creating most of, is carbon dioxide. The amount of CO2 is measured in parts per million concentration, and this used to be around about 270 to 280, before we came along in the 18th century and started burning things, and then it began to rise. In 2009 it was 388, now it will be more, and it's increasing every year. The theory at the heart of the question we're on is as follows. Here's the Earth, and here's its atmosphere, which we're adding greenhouse gases to. Radiation from the sun heats up our planet. Some heat is reflected away, and some is absorbed by the planet itself. When Earth re-radiates that heat away into space, some of it is absorbed by carbon dioxide, methane, water vapour and other greenhouse gases, which then return it back to Earth. The effect is one of trapping the heat. The climate is made warmer, and that's the greenhouse effect. It's how most scientists think we're contributing to changing the climate. Some warming is definitely unavoidable. We've already seen about 0.8 degrees from pre-industrial temperatures, um, there's another half a degree or so in the system already. These things are only ever expressed as a range, and even that has uncertainty attached to it. But, I mean, the probability is that to stay within two degrees peak temperature this century, we would need to begin to bend the emissions curve down from between 2015 and 2020. The biggest group of scientists working on predictions is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Because nobody can predict the future exactly, when trying to figure out how much global temperatures might rise, the IPCC gives a range. They say by the end of the century, temperatures might only increase a further 1.1 degrees, but it could be over 6. It all depends on how much greenhouse gas we emit, and how sensitive the climate is to it. Different temperatures will bring different effects, but I can't help wondering, are they all going to be terrible? So next, I asked if climate change is all bad. Couldn't we do with hotter summers and some local vineyards? Well, it's already vineyards in southern England. Um, I've been to a vineyard in Shropshire which produced very high quality wine, nice bubbly as well. Uh, does that make up for devastating most of Africa? You know, probably not, in the view of Africans anyway.